racist. Jesse, you're a racist. You're a racist, Jesse. Ooh. Marcus Conti reporting on the Jesse Smollett uh, incident where he he pretended that two thugs in mega hats, make America great again hats, two white guys put a noose around his neck and tried to bleach him white. Right, and he went down to the police and said, oh, I got him. Here they are. And it turns out to, turned out to be a total fucking lie, right? He got um, <clears throat> vindicated. I don't know much what to say about this. I haven't been following the story too close, but I'm going to play a bunch of videos that really uh, explain it uh, better than I could ever explain it. So, um, so while you're here, we're still still fighting uh, fighting oppression, YouTube oppression, being in exile here. Buy some stickers at uh, eBay to support the cause. Those are the old ones. These are the new ones. These are the new ones. These are the old ones. Buy some stickers, man. Have both of them. They're going to be collector's items because we're not fucking around, man. We're not going away. We're not quitting. Every video I've ever made is saved and ready, and someday we're going to exalt it, and we're going to be as big as big. We're going to be, we're going to compete with CNN. CNN, we're going to be truth, truth news. Ah, I could see, I got a vision. I got a vision, man. I got a fucking vision, man. So... So, um, so kindly become a Patreon, become a, uh, you go to the, this channel or the main channel and just click on Patreon. We're doing really well. We got 32 Patreons. We're, we're going to, we're shooting for 300. We want to make this a sustainable effort so that, so that, uh, we can continue to do what we're doing or through, you can make a one-time payment through PayPal. So here we go. So, so Jesse Smollett, black racist, gay, male, actor well connected in hollywood right, <clears throat> is gets caught doing the things that we said that i just told you he did he he said he went to the police station and said two white guys two white guys with mega make america great again hats maga hats tie, uh, put a noose around his neck said they were going to kill him and then he and they threw white bleach on him and then he ended up down in the police station complaining that this is what happened, and it all turns out to be fake. Uh, he made 16 lies, 16 f felonies, where then he f the uh, grand jury indicted him on 16 felony charges, and yesterday it was dismissed. It was, it was, he was given community service and, and time served, and his record was expunged. You talk about, I mean, you talk about privilege is it black privilege is it hollywood privilege is it a combination of the both a combination of both i can't really i can't really say well but let's listen to i thought for sure that the authority you know the police would come out and say oh no no we have to go along with justice manu uh, uh rahm emanuel the mayor of chicago would have said the same not so listen to what they said it's really good stuff Good afternoon. <laughs> so listen, um, I'm sure we all know what, what occurred this morning. Uh, my personal opinion is that you all know where I stand on this. Um, do I think justice was served? No. Wow. Where do I think justice is? I think this city is still old an apology. And, and let me digress for a moment. When I came on this job, I've been a cop now for about 31 years. When I came on this job, I came on with my honor, my integrity, and my reputation. If someone accused me of doing anything that would circumvent that, then I would want my day in court, period, to clear my name. I've heard that they wanted their day in court with TV cameras so America could know the truth, but no, they chose to hide behind secrecy and broker a deal to circumvent the judicial system. My job as a police officer is to investigate an incident, gather evidence, gather facts, and present them to the state's attorney. That's what we did. I stand behind the detective's investigation. I'll let Mary Manuel comment further. One thing is not only do uh, I support uh, the hard work of our police officers, the defective units, 
about just, that. Just uh, as a as a caveat, if you don't know who a, a man, uh, Rahm Emanuel is, this guy was Obama's, you know, f- you know, favorite lackey. He he's a Democratic operative. He's you know he's been he's been on the far left or the centrist left, the corporatist left for so long that you can't even count. And the the idea that he's going to come out and say that that. That they got a that it was a political hatchet job, is is unbelievable. I mean, in in his own in his own words, Emmanuel, you know, Rahm Emanuel makes the case that that it was a travesty of justice that the kid got away with it. He he did it. The evidence suggested he did it in trial. They were extremely confident that they would have gotten a conviction, and the kid kid walked. I like to remind. I'm going to play the Jesse Smollett's testimony too. And then also we'll hear from Tucker Carlson. I think Tucker Carlson did the best review of this uh, ever. And I'll, I'll, I'll play pieces of that or maybe the whole thing because it really uh, – Tucker Carlson put the whole thing into perspective. Mind everybody, a grand jury indicted this individual based on a, only a piece of the evidence that the police had uh, collected in that period of time. So a grand jury actually brought the charges. I think on two – Things I'd like to say, or three things I'd like to say. One, on financial costs, this $10,000 doesn't even come close to what the city spent in resources. The $10,000, the kid, uh, Jesse Smollett, he he put up a $100,000 bail, but you only have to put up 10% of that money. He made his bail. He put up ten grand, and it, as a part of the negotiation, he forfeited that ten grand. As if it's a big deal for a rich guy to, to forfeit ten grand to get out of it's like getting out of jail free. It's paying ten grand to get out of jail. It's it's absurd. To actually look over the camera, gather all the data, guy. He's uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel is making the case that the city spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, and this kid spent a little bit of money and, and got out. For all information that actually brought the indictment by the grand jury, on many many multiple different charges. Second is what I would call the ethical cost. And the ethical cost is you have, a, as a person who was in the House of Representatives when we try to pass the Shepard legislation that dealt with hate crimes, putting them on the books, that President Obama then signed into law, to then use those very laws and the principles and values behind the Matthew Shepard hate crimes legislation to self-promote your career is a, is a cost that comes to all the individuals, gay men and women, who will come forward and one day say they were a victim of a hate crime who now will be doubted. People of faith, Muslim or any other religious faith, who will be a victim of hate crimes. People that of also of all walks of life and backgrounds, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, now this casts a shadow of whether they're telling the truth. And he did this all in the name of self-promotion. And he- you, could, you could see the sincerity. I mean, I've watched Rahm Emanuel many times. And he's, he's, you can almost see, like, even the, the uh, police chief over here was like, they were choked up. They can't believe what, what, they're like, what the fuck just happened? Holy shit, he got out? Use the laws of the hate crime legislation that all of us... Because collect- it makes them look bad. It makes them look like they're like a bunch of lackeys, like they didn't do anything. Like they 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 they're trying to frame the Chicago Police Department as as you know as framing a a poor, you know a, an uppity black celebrity gay celebrity black Jew gay whatever the hell the fuck he is right collectively over years have put on the books to stand up to be the values that embody what else Let me keep listening what we believe in. this is a whitewash of justice it's a blackwash of justice. A grand jury could not have been clear. To then say, not only is the cost, the $10,000 doesn't come cost financially, but all the other repercussions of this decision it made to me, where is the accountability in the system? You cannot have, because of a person's position, one set of rules apply to them, and another set of rules apply to everybody else. 
Hey, hey, Rom, where were you when Hillary Clinton, when the rules didn't apply to Hillary Clinton and the rest of the, the corrupt Democrats and Bill Clinton and all the all the fucks inside the DNC and, and uh, you know, John John Podesta and Robbie Mook when they, they created a Russia story. Now there's a, now there's a, a separation of, uh, uh, you know, now certain people are treated one way and certain treat, people are treated the other way. And now you give a shit? Now you're a fucking hypocrite. Now you show your real color because you are a fucking hypocrite. Where were you when Hillary Clinton was getting was breaking the law and 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 James Comey and all the fucking FBI spooks and CIA spooks? Where the, where were you then? In another way, you're seeing this play out in the universities, where people pay extra to get their kids a special position in universities. Not or or politicians like Hillary Clinton get out of get out of jail free card after breaking the you know breaking the law 55 times how dare him after everybody saw and i want to remind you to do that is in court not secrecy I, I, I want to get, to listen to this this is good i want to say one other thing mr smollett is still saying that he is innocent still running down the chicago police department how dare him how dare him after everybody saw, and I want to remind you, this is not the superintendent's word against his. The grand jury, a sliver of the evidence, and they came to a conclusion. All right, so I, I like, I mean, we got to love Rahm Emanuel's effort here, right? But but he's still a hypocrite because, you know, he's saying that there's there's two tiers of justice. and uh, But when, when push came to shove and it was, it was, uh, uh, very apparent in 2016 and onward, he, he didn't do anything. He's been a silent jerk off. So, um, but nonetheless, the police and the mayor of Chicago are concluding that this guy is a liar. I just made a couple notes. Um, first of all, I want to thank my family, my friends, the incredible people of Chicago and all over the country and the world who have prayed for me, who have supported me who've shown me so much love. No one will ever know how much that has meant to me, and I will forever be grateful. Straight up loud. I want you to know that not for a moment was it in vain. I have been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I've been accused of. Bullshit. This has been an incredibly difficult time, honestly one of the worst of my entire life. But I am a man of faith, and I'm a man that has knowledge of my history, and I would not bring my family, our lives, or the movement through a fire like this. I just wouldn't. So I want to thank my legal counsel from the bottom of my heart. And I would also like to thank the state of Illinois for attempting to do what's right. Now, I'd like nothing more than to just get back to work and move on with my life. Ah, see, privilege. He gets to go. He gets to. He gets to walk out the door, and go on with his life. Go make movies. It worked out for him, right? Who's pulling the strings? Who's pulling the strings? If not the the city of Chicago, which we just heard from, and they're certainly not doing it. They wanted to see him. Uh, they wanted to see him face justice. But who's pulling the strings behind the federal prosecutors? We'll find out. Tucker Carlson did a good dig. We'll, he'll he'll tell us what happened. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. So again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for faith, and thank you to God. Bless y'all. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, what a fucking liar. So let's hear Tucker Carlson. Just tonight, just hours ago, prosecutors in Chicago dropped all charges against actor Jesse Smollett. Smollett, you'll remember, was facing 16 felony counts for faking an elaborate hate crime against himself back in January. Police say Smollett hired two Nigerian bodybuilders to hang a noose around his neck, pour bleach on him, and scream, this is MAGA country, because that kind of thing happens a lot in downtown Chicago during the winter months. Smollett then told credulous reporters he had been assaulted by two white racist Trump supporters. Well, as of tonight, police still believe that Smollett was lying about all that. So do prosecutors. They think he concocted the hoax, and they said so yet again today. And yet the state of Illinois is somehow, for some reason, dumping the case anyway. In exchange for the $100,000 he has already paid in bond, Smollett will walk free. 
his record will be expunged. Every he didn't pay a hundred. He paid ten. He only paid ten percent of the hundred. Everything will return to normal, like it never happened. Smollett described this decision as a victory, not just for him, but for the broader cause of civil rights. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I have been accused of. This has been an incredibly difficult time, honestly one of the worst of my entire life. But I am a man of faith and I'm a man that has knowledge of my history and I would not bring my family, our lives or the movement through a fire like this. I just wouldn't. Now I'd like nothing more than to just get back to work and move on with my life. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. Uh-huh. Okay, a couple of pretty obvious questions here. What is this movement Smollett refers to? Is he in contact with other perpetrators of fake hate crimes? Have they formed a union? Will they hold a convention? There are enough of them they could. And how exactly has Smollett, who last we checked was an actor on a TV show, fought for the, quote, justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. Was pouring bleach on himself part of that fight? How do the noose and the Nigerian bodybuilders figure into Smollett's struggle for justice and equality? These are the two guys that say that, that are supposed to be the white guys, that he paid twenty, he paid $3,500 uh, to, to orchestrate the attack on him. Two Nigerian brothers, bodybuilders, Black as the ace of spades. And by the way, why aren't the rest of us laughing at this? It is just too absurd. CNN doesn't think it's funny. They're taking Jesse Smollett very seriously, as they always have. Jeff Zucker's tiny spokesman emerged this afternoon to declare the whole thing an unfathomable mystery of faith, like the Shroud of Turin. We may never know. The narrative has once again changed from victim, uh, you know, to villain, back to victim. It's been very confusing, as, as Ryan was saying. Uh, people don't know what to believe, and we may never really know what happened on the street that night in Chicago. We may never really know. You see, you see the, the, thing, the thing about it is how the lies compound, right? It's that we're living in a, in a, in a lying, cheating, you know, politically charged atmosphere and and the truth is not none of no, it's it, what i'm trying to say is that when the truth is convenient for me and suits me that's when i'll tell the truth like what tucker carlson is doing now he's telling the truth but tucker carlson has also been guilty of not telling the truth it's just like the fucking igor over here right on cnn right it's trying to be truthful true and true and then maybe we wouldn't have such have these fucking problems uh, that we're having because this is a problem now. This is this is a travesty of justice. It flips the whole uh, the whole idea of of people making false complaints, uh, you know, about attackers. It flips it on its on its side. It flips it on its head. Uh, it's really, I mean, truth, true and true. So it looks like we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this whole Jesse Smollett thing. But wait, does anyone know any news reporters? They should have some free time these days, post-Russia hysteria. Maybe they could find out more about this. For example, why isn't Jussie Smollett concerned about the two white racists he says attacked him? Shouldn't he be leading the charge to lock these villains up? That's a great point, right? Why is, why is Jesse Smollett suddenly silent? If, if, the, if, if he didn't set himself up, and was attacked, shouldn't he come storming out the door saying, I want to see justice brought to the people that did this to me? Nothing. Right? That's a huge tell. Good catch. Um, good catch, uh, Tucker Carlson. That there was no, he, this, where's the outrage? Where's the outrage? I was attacked. I was attacked by two white motherfuckers with hats on, putting a noose around my neck. Where's the fucking outrage? It's one thing to say, that you didn't set yourself up, but now you're saying that it, it, you're not confirming that it even happened in your, own, in your own body language, in your own behavior. According to Smollett, they're still on the loose. They're free to assault other hapless biracial TV actors who are just looking to get a Subway sandwich at 2 a.m. in the morning on the streets of Chicago, and we need to stop them before they do. And what about the Chicago Police Department? It's led by an African-American chief, but that doesn't mean it's not part of the wider racist conspiracy. It must be. 
Chicago cops just framed Jussie Smollett as a liar and destroyed his reputation. And yet, for some reason, Smollett doesn't seem to care about that. He says he just wants to, quote, move on. Hmm, that's odd. And what about the Nigerian brothers? Last month, both CNN and the Chicago Tribune reported the men had told police they'd rehearsed the attack on Jussie Smollett. Was that a lie? Will Smollett sue them now for defamation? Other news outlets reported that police discovered rope, bleach, and masks in the brothers' apartment. Apparently, Smollett's phone records show he was talking to the brothers immediately before and immediately after the attack, he alleged. What was that all about? Well, we could go on and on, but why bother? You know exactly what's happening here. Smollett isn't getting off because he's innocent. He's not innocent. He's something better than innocent. He's famous. The charges against him were dropped because someone in power called someone else in power and said, let him go. None of this had anything to do with justice. It's the opposite of justice. Even in famously corrupt Chicago, what was happening was just too obvious. The mayor and the chief of police pretended to be very shocked by it. If you want to say you're innocent of a situation, then you take your day in court. See, that, that's, that's good on Tucker Carlson. He's calling, I mean, I, I just called the hypocrisy about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. But the hypocrisy of, of these guys now saying that there's, that there's two tiers of justice is, is really ridiculous, especially Rahm Emanuel. I would never, if someone falsely accused me, I would never hide behind a broker deal and secrecy, period. Where is the accountability in the system? You cannot have, because of a person's position, one set of rules apply to them and another set of rules apply to everybody else. In another way, you're seeing this play out in the universities, where people pay extra to get their kids a special position in universities. You're seeing it play out in, in, in Congress and in the Senate and in the judicial system and in the executive branch, um, uh, uh, Rom. This is a whitewash of justice. A whitewash of justice. So how did the state's attorney who dropped these charges, answer that. Well, she issued a statement explaining that the charges against Jesse Smollett were dropped in part because of his, quote, volunteer service in the community. Okay, what exactly was that service? Well, according to a news account tonight, Smollett spent a total of 18 hours over two days at Jesse Jackson's lobbying organization, the Rainbow Push Coalition. While he was there, Smollett spent his time, and this is a direct quote, stuffing- 18 hours of community service. What a fucking joke. Two days, nine-hour days, and what did he do? He probably sat down, he had lunch, he talked to a bunch of people, signed autographs, he did the celebrity thing. Stuffed envelopes, sat at the table, right? pretended he's actually helping the community. It's such a fucking, it's such a thing. Scam. Membership envelopes, working in the group's bookstore to sell merchandise and critiquing its Saturday broadcast. He also, quote, worked with the music director on a plan to build the choir. Apparently, the community was greatly enriched by all of this. We should note that Jesse Jackson, who runs it, is one of the most politically powerful people in the city of Chicago. It helps to have friends like that. And if you don't believe it, just go ahead and try it yourself. Go ahead and stage a fake hate crime in which you slander an entire group of people on the basis of their skin color and political beliefs. Then head over to Good Morning America and conduct a tearful interview with the sympathetic Robin Roberts. Describe yourself as a victim of systemic racism in this country. And then get caught doing it. Tell us how you do. Then let us know when the visiting hours are. We'll come see you in prison. Smollett's not going to prison. He was smarter than that. He knew he would never be punished. He knows Jesse Jackson. He's friends with Kamala Harris and Barack and Michelle Obama. Don Lamont at CNN texts Jesse all the time on his cell phone and brags about it. Jesse Smollett may claim to fight for marginalized people, but he is not one of them. In fact, he occupies the highest rank of privilege in our society. He's above the law. Increasingly, there seem to be quite a few people like that in this country. You'll recognize them because they're the ones always lecturing you about how bigoted and unfair America is. What they don't understand is that they are proving that point. Just tonight, just hours ago. Wow, I couldn't have done it any better. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. So, what, you know, what do we got here, man? Jesse, Jesse Smollett. Some some deadbeat actor. He pulls a publicity stunt. He uses he uses his black race and tries to blame white people in hate crimes, trying to derail the 
president of the United States using the MAGA, the MAGA hat. It's just, it's just outrageous. I mean, what's happening in this country. I mean, this is what happens when you don't lock people up for breaking the law. Right? See how it, it snowballs out of control? There'll be no consequence. Someone of power said, this guy gets a free pass. Where? Where's the, who, who did it? Who, where? We don't even, we're not even allowed to know who gave him the pass, right? I mean, the answer is in, the, in that, that federal prosecutor. Anyway, it's a travesty, Justice. It's, um, I mean, it's, it's also, I mean, it's also a, a, a turning point in terms of the, the uh, what I think, white racism. Again, that's what got me into this journalism in the first place, is being a white person discriminated in a work situation where it was 90% black and Hispanic and other. I, and here I was, was this white guy standing out like a sore thumb. And, and every little thing that I did was amplified to the, to the, to, you know, to the, you know, to the second power and to the third power. Every stupid thing I ever said was amplified, but everything that anybody who was black or other was, uh, said was, uh, not a big deal. It was just business as usual, right? So there's, there's that element of racism and favoritism leaning black. And then there's also the favoritism of the wealthy taking care of each other. The gay community, oh, he's gay. We have to help him, right? But what about the truth? What about what, about what is true and what is, what is equal, equal rights for all when someone breaks the law? You know how many kids, you know how many people of color are sitting in, you know, blacks sitting in jail in Chicago for for something, be sixteen felonies facing sixteen felonies. You think the average kid in Chicago would have got gotten away with that shit? And you want to look and you want to look out and say, Ah, man, Jesse got away with it. My man Jesse Smollett got away with it, man. Motherfucker got away with that shit. Fuck you, man. Fucker got away with that shit. Yeah, you're proud of that. You're proud of that, but look look at your homeboys sitting in jail in a two-tier system. Marcus Conti reporting.